Hello and welcome again to this uh, series of how to become a company doctor or uh, what can you do or what are the skills you need to become a company doctor and let's move on with our uh, other questions. Last time we discussed if um, any doctor can become a company doctor and we said yes. We also discussed um, uh, my background story and different types of contracts that you may uh, be doing. Now the next question is what are the basic things that you do as an occupational health assessor. Now this is important, it's actually a long list, but again you have to understand, first of course you'll check your job description. So you have to check the job description with the management, but you also need to check the legal requirements because in some countries there are some specific requirements that you have to do as an occupational health physician or a company doctor. Uh, first is that you can conduct or coordinate the pre-employment medical check. So based on the requirements of every country, you need to do the basics or coordinate it like um, if, if the company that you work with has its own clinic or its own hospital where it usually sends the new hired employees for the um, um, pre-employment medical check and they do different tests for example the, the, your x-rays or basic blood tests etc but you as an occupational health physician should decide based on different hazards uh, what kind of special tests may be needed in addition to the basics done and again let's use the example of noise if you expect for example you're working in a factory and I worked as a consultant and as a part-time uh, occupational medicine doctor in different factories I visited with different teams and we've seen a lot of situations so for example if you're working or uh, providing service to a factory that has high noise levels uh, employees are exposed to high noise levels then maybe you need to include an audiometry in the pre-employment checkup which may not be usually included in the regular pre-employment checkup so this is one thing you do another is based on um, where you are located uh, you may need to attend to different regular uh, you know uh, complaints so <laughs> what do you expect in uh, the occupational health clinic well uh, some people just come in you know we'll, we'll discuss the, the the main complaints later but just the general stuff that you should expect um, please check my blood pressure. Uh, I'm having a, a, a little bit of a headache. Uh, can you check this blood test for me? Can you read it for me? Uh, tell me the result. Things of that sort. I mean, there is nothing, you know, major that you should be expecting at all times. This is, you know, the regular daily uh, stuff. Someone who's diabetic and they need to check their, their, their blood sugar, uh, you know, um, prick tests or, or things like that. Um, what other things you can do of course checking vital signs um, the basic medical examinations sometimes if you're in a location and you you receive a new employee even if they have their medical certificate with them you may still be needed to do some basic checks physical examination skin checks uh, you know take some history you may also need to deal with injuries and this is a very big part of it uh, because other than occupational health or some people don't understand that a lot of, of what we do as occupational health doctors or company doctors is dealing with different injuries because a lot of people get injured on the job. The limits of what you can do or what you are authorized to do will depend on your skills, on the requirements uh, and availability of uh, different uh, you know, medical equipment that you have and your previous training. So let's say for example you get a, um, a knife cut, well you can do the first aid for that. Are you allowed to do stitching or not? It depends, you have to check first. Are you allowed to do intubation or not? It depends and you have to check first. Check what? Check your own skills, check if, it is, if you are allowed under the law to do it, if it is included in the responsibilities in your job description. Also it depends where you are. So for example I used to work in a place which was like seven hours uh, off-road driving from the nearest, nearest medical facility. So I couldn't wait at some point so I there, there were some skills and some things that I had to do I had my own pharmacy for example stocked in my trailer and I needed to do the, the, the you know the checking the stock and the inventory of the medicines that I have and everything even if it's prescription medicine because I was operating in countries where I was licensed uh, to, to do prescriptions um, so yeah dealing with injuries keeping medical records and reports are very important of course so you'll keep all the medical records you maintain the confidentiality you communicate any necessary things with the management or with the government uh, sometimes you do studies of the trends you know of some diseases you do some epidemiological or statistical analysis just the basic stuff you know you also help with the rehabilitation uh, or um, you know overseeing the rehabilitation or return to work after an injury for example or after, a, um, after someone has been injured and they're trying to return to work. 
Uh, you do sometimes will be involved in doing the health risk assessment. So you check what might be affecting the health of people, different exposures, let's say, for example, noise or dust or specific chemicals. And there are, of course, steps to do that. Now, if you're interested in any of these headlines that I am talking about and you'd like me to make more videos on how would we go through it in detail, let me know. Uh, of course, coordinating with different departments like the safety department. So one of the main departments, usually you'd be actually working usually under the safety department or reporting to the safety manager in a way, maybe functionally or administratively. Uh, at some point, you'll deal with them. And of course, you'll deal with other departments, the mechanics workshop, the, any, any department, because people will be complaining and they'll be asking to take a leave and you'll be the one in charge of doing this. So you have to coordinate with them. A very important thing to do is health surveillance. So what do you do with health surveillance? Health surveillance, some sort of a proactive checking of people's health, of the workers' health, uh, based on the hazards that they're exposed to. So you don't need to wait for the annual medical checkup to find out that someone is having hearing loss because you could do the hearing test uh, proactively. Uh, health surveillance, you could do uh, chest x-rays, blood tests. It depends what you're looking for. Of course, first aid uh, may be one of your uh, things that you do on daily basis checking and coordinating for well-being and you know uh, healthy lifestyle kind of programs for the employees starting awareness campaigns and speaking of awareness campaigns of course you need to do training at some point it's a part of your life whether you are a company doctor or you are a health and safety specialist you will have to do training. Uh, sometimes I used to do the induction training, for example, for the newly hired people. If there is first aid training, they usually say the doctor should do it. Uh, <laughs> you know, so it's a given that you need to do uh, some training and some lectures. Uh, you do ergonomics risk assessment. And uh, finally, uh, before I end this video, there are a lot of things that you may need to do related to checking or inspecting for hygiene purposes. For example, you may need to check the showers, uh, the toilets uh, for hygienic uh, you know, uh, purposes. You need to check accommodation if people are sleeping in. And of course, one of the main important things is food hygiene and food safety. So for example, I was in charge of uh, everything related to food safety in the camp that I worked with. I had around 500 people all of their health uh, problems were under my supervision so i had to check the food i checked the food delivery the supply the the food hygiene the food safety in the kitchen everything related to that because if, if anything goes wrong it will be your uh, responsibility so you're accountable for that i think these are the basic things that you usually do on daily basis again depending on where you are or what your work is this is what you would expect and i'll make the next video for answering the rest of the questions